Welcome to Getting Started with Big IP Access Policy Manager. This is Lesson 3, Creating a Portal Access Resource. In this lesson, you will be presented with an overview of how Big IP Access Policy Manager is used to create a portal access resource. Next, you will see how the Big IP system is configured to perform this function. Finally, you will have a chance to check your knowledge and consider next steps for a more fully functional solution. There are three separate lessons on F5 University that address some of the different functions of Big IP APM. For this lesson, we will use Big IP APM to create a portal access resource. Additional training is available on F5 University. Big IP APM is two applications rolled up into a single product. First is a remote access solution that includes an SSL VPN concentrator and a web application reverse proxy engine. There is also an app tunnel method that can be used for single application remote access such as SSH and remote desktop. The second application is a policy enforcement point. APM supports authentication, authorization, client-side endpoint inspection, access control lists, dynamic resource and ACL allocation, and single sign-on methods including credential reuse, Kerberos, and SAML. Policy enforcement can be used with LTM or with the APM remote access methods just described. The primary use cases for Big IP are policy enforcement layered on LTM and policy enforcement used with the previously mentioned remote access methods. APM supports Microsoft Windows, Apple Macintosh, Linux, Apple iOS, Google Android, and Google Chrome OS operating systems. In this scenario, the fictional company needs to make Microsoft Outlook Web Access on an internal server available to remote users that may not have access to the VPN. The solution is to use Big IP APM portal access and have users go to the existing virtual server and select OWA from the landing page. Before we jump into the configuration, let's take a closer look at the technology. In this scenario, there are web applications inside the company that are protected by a firewall that is not shown. For varying reasons, an SSL VPN is not always the preferred solution. APM can provide portal access to internal web applications for remote users. Here, the user logs on to APM and clicks a portal access resource on the APM landing page. The Big IP is configured with a starting URL for that resource and sends the request to the internal server, in this case to intranet.local slash start.htm. The server responds to APM with a web page that contains HTML links to another page on that server as well as a page on a different server. The host names in these links are encoded and sent to the client as seen here and here. It is important to note that Portal Access can access multiple web application servers on the internal network. When the user clicks on a link on the page just received, the web browser requests the new page. The URL for the page points back to Big IP, otherwise the page would be unreachable. Once APM receives the HTTP request, it decodes the URL and sends it to the correct internal server. Here, the user clicks on a link pointing to a different internal server, and APM decodes that request and sends it to the appropriate server. Portal access is sometimes referred to as HTTP tunneling because it can be used to connect to any internal web application. Before continuing, we also want to take a quick look at AD Auth and AD Query. When the access policy performs an AD auth, it sends the username and password collected in the logon page action to the Active Directory domain controller, which evaluates the credentials. If they are correct, AD auth passes control to the successful branch. If not, control is passed to the fallback branch. When the access policy performs an AD query, it sends the username to the domain controller and requests information about that user. Finally, the Advanced Resource Assign action can use that information to dynamically assign resources, that is, resources that are only assigned to a specific class of users. 
For example, if the advanced resource assign action was configured with the policy shown here, then if a user were a member of OWA, that user would receive the OWA portal access resource. Considering the Active Directory snippet, users Bob, Carol, and Dave would see the OWA resource on their landing page. Users Alice and Eve would not. Here's a quick look at the configuration overview from the previous scenario. To work with this scenario, the access policy needs to change slightly to add an AD query action. Note the AD query has the same dependency on the Active Directory AAA server as the AD auth action. In addition to the network access resource in the advanced resource assigned, we will also be adding a portal access resource. Finally, any time a portal access resource is used, the virtual server has to have a rewrite profile configured. The first step is to add a rewrite profile to the virtual server. Unlike the connectivity profile, which we had to create first, there is a generic rewrite profile that we can use here. Navigate to Local Traffic, Virtual Servers, Virtual Server List. Click the Virtual Server List menu option now to continue. Click the Connect Virtual Server link now to continue. Select the generic rewrite profile and click the Update button now to continue. The next step is to create the portal access resource. Navigate to Access, Connectivity and VPN, Portal Access, Portal Access Lists. Click the Portal Access Lists menu option now to continue. Click the Create with Template button now to continue. As always, you have to specify a name for the Portal Access resource. Select the OWA 2010 template. This will reduce the configuration required. Provide the host name for the OWA server as well as a scheme, which is HTTPS in this case, and the application URI or starting URI for the application. Scroll down the page and enter a meaningful caption that will appear on the landing page. Click the Finish button now to continue. After creating the resource, update the access policy first by adding the AD query action. Click the plus sign now in the spot where you want to add the AD query to continue. Click the Authentication tab now to continue. Click the AD Query radio button now 
to continue. Click the Add Item button now to continue. In the AD Query Properties, select the AAA server we created in the first lesson and click the Save button now to continue. Our updated policy is not exactly what we want. APM tries to be helpful by creating a branch in the AD query for user group primary ID is 100. But we don't want this branch and we need to delete it. However, if we delete the branch as it is now, it will delete the advanced resource assign action. To avoid this problem, we need to move that action to the fallback branch. Start by clicking the double arrow in front of the advanced resource assign to select the thing to be moved. Click it now to continue. Next, click the up arrow in the AD Query fallback branch to select the location for the move. Click it now to continue. Now with the advanced resource assigned action in the right place, we can delete the user primary group ID is 100 branch. Click the AD query link now to continue. We've already configured the property sheet. Click the branch rules tab now to continue. Here we see the two branches, but only the first branch can be deleted. Delete that first branch by clicking the X now to continue. Click the Save button now. We'll see the results of our changes in the next slide. Our next step is to modify the advanced resource assign action. Note the AD query is cleaned up and the advanced resource assign is on the AD query fallback branch. Click the advanced resource assign link now to continue. We need to add a new entry because this dynamic resource is only for users in the OWA group. Click the Add New Entry button now to continue.
Click the first Add Delete link now. Click the Portal Access tab now to continue. Click the OWA Portal Access Resource checkbox now to continue. Click the Update button now to continue. As configured now, every user will have access to the OWA resource. Let's add an expression that only allows users in the OWA group. Click the first change link now to continue. Click the Add Expression button now to continue. Because the user membership data was collected by the AD Query action, set the agent selection to AD Query and the condition to User is a member of. The Active Directory group must be entered in the LDAP Distinguished Name format. For the group name, do not leave a space after the commas. If you do, it will not match groups correctly. Click the Add Expression button now to continue. Click the Finish button now. The Advanced Resource Assigned configuration is now complete. The blue block reads, if the user is a member of the Active Directory OWA group, then assign that user the OWA portal access resource. The gray block reads, because the expression is empty, assign every user the VPN network access resource and the landing page full webtop. Thus, every user will get the VPN and the full webtop, but only some users will get OWA. Click the Save button now to continue. One of the endings is wrong. Correct it and wrap up.
Now for some action. See a user connect to an internal web application, but only if the user is a member of a specific Active Directory group. OK, let's look at the new configuration in action. Let's log on with user Ann first. Recall that Ann is not a member of OWA. Her landing page looks the same as it did in the previous lesson. Now let's log out and log in again as user Bob, who is a member of OWA. You'll see a new resource on his landing page. Clicking that resource, we see the logon page of OWA. In this case, we are accessing OWA using a portal access HTTP tunnel, not an SSL VPN tunnel. To review, the fictional company needed to make Outlook Web Access available to remote users that may not have had access to the VPN. The solution was to use Big IP APM Portal Access and have users use existing virtual server and select OWA from the landing page. Moving forward, users want single sign-on because they have to enter their username and password once for APM and once for OWA. Also, some users want to connect to a different virtual server, skip the landing page, and go straight into OWA. You can learn more about these options in the F5 Configuring Big IP APM Instructor-Led Customer Course. Thank you for taking this WBT. Please be sure to check out the other WBTs in the Getting Started with Big IP series.